a couple years after I graduated from high school, I found an LGBT supportive um, community at my college. Okay. And they had asked me what my gender identity was. And I told them I'm a female. Mm. And they asked me, are you sure? And I told them I had <laughs> questioned my gender in the past that I had at one point identified as something other than my biological sex. And I told them I identify female. Mm. And they told me that they see me as an egg and that I'm going to hatch one day and realize that I'm non-binary. Hey, everybody, I caught myself another one. Super, super excited today. So um, first, before we move forward, I just want to say to everybody, so grateful for you, so grateful for you watching these interviews. And I get such amazing people coming on. I feel very, um, I feel very um, honored that these people reach out to me and come on the show with me and, you know, lend a voice and a different opinion about and mostly all of them are giving their life experience, which is why I think these interviews are so important, because it's not just a monolithic voice. And I think that's what we're getting from so-called community right now. So a lot of these people are bringing their own stories, which I think help us get, it gives this whole space a more nuanced uh, uh, space as well as n different types of voices and experiences. So, so with that, remember like subscribe, please share this with as many people as you can. I super, super appreciate that so much. So thanks to our video sponsor today the ye soul g1 s plus oh this bike is so cool you guys i love it so much it's easy to use super easy to put together it has a screen on it so you just download the app that has all these amazing workouts on it and next thing you know you're doing workouts they have 20 minute workouts 30 minute 45 minute it's awesome and it keeps track of all your calories how you work out when you work out so it's really takes care of so much of that part for you the the best part I love is I just get on my bike in the morning before I start work and I get my workout out of the way and it feels so great. It comes with these amazing little um, weights so you get a little extra punch in your workout which is always a great thing to have that as well. So you're getting, you can have a full body workout on this bike which is incredible to me. I love that you can have all these different types of workouts and they have this great thing where you can travel to China, France, Switzerland. So again, it takes your mind off of, you know, if you don't really want to work out or you're not in the mood, you can just take a little bit of a bike ride here's the really great thing about it it now comes with a screen casting cable so you can plug it into your phone and you can play any of your favorite movies from any of your favorite streaming sites and that is a really great plus i will be adding a 100 dollars discount coupon to all my followers and that'll be in the description of this video so thanks again for watching I have Layla here and she's a super awesome, cool person who reached out to me on the internet and um, that damn internet. <laughs> and um, so um, I'm going to introduce, I'm going to bring her on right now and then she's going to say who she is and then we'll get on with the interview. Hi, Layla. Thanks so much for joining me. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Sweet. So um, first off, let us know a little bit like what's your, how old are you and, and a little bit of that background. Okay. Um, I'm 21. Um, when right. I was 15, I had, um, I was questioning my gender identity. I was considering okay. if I was um, female or male. Oh, okay. Okay. So you, uh, at 15, you thought maybe you were trans male like me. Right. Yep. Why do you think that was? What, what, what was the thing that was making you question your identity? Um, I think there were a couple of factors. Mm -hmm. I think a big factor was I had um, underlying mental health issues. I had depression and anxiety that weren't oh. being treated or acknowledged. Um, I also mm. was from a very, I am from a very liberal area, okay. very um, pro LGBT. I have okay. a lot of trans friends and mm. a lot of people had told me if you're not comfortable in your body, maybe you're trans. They actually said that to you? Yes. Wow. So are so are those people trans themselves? Um, they identify as trans and have um, gone through medical transition. And were they 15 year olds like you were? Um, they were closer to 17, 18. They just reached adulthood. Wow. Wow. And they were already transitioning. You know, I, 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 I think that's a very young age to be transitioning and i don't want anybody to think i'm like just gatekeeping because i'm not but in my own opinion i think somebody of that age is a very drastic space to start taking hormones and move into medical 
transition. So, so, so here you are, you're dealing with anxiety and some mental, you know, health stuff going on with you. And that was diagnosed, right? You had a diagnosis of that? Yes. Right. Were you on medication by any chance? Yes, I was taking an SSRI called Zoloft at the time. Oh, Zoloft. I took Zoloft back in the day. Yeah, that's been around forever. Um, so, so are you still using Zoloft at this time? No. No, you got off of it. Okay. So here you are with um, anxiety, um, mental health issues. You're on actual medication. And then somebody says to you, maybe you're trans. So they put that seed in your... Did you ever hear about trans before they said that? Um, I have briefly heard about it. My parents have had trans friends. They had mm -hmm. introduced me to the topic of trans when I was younger, probably around mm -hmm. nine or 10. Oh, wow. I also knew about it from the internet. There you go. <laughs> that damn internet, what I said earlier. <laughs> it's dangerous for young people. I, I do really think so. I mean, especially now with, with this type of stuff happening. So, so there you are. And then, so you, so they, so they, basically it sounds to me that they kind of got you questioning yourself. Yes. Right. And so you started questioning, maybe I'm trans. And then what happened from there? Um, I had gone to my primary care physician. I had told him, um, I'm questioning my gender. I think I might be trans. Mm -hmm. And his advice to me was for the best results, you should transition right away. Um, Wait a he minute had... here. What? So you went to a regular primary care doctor. You and you were, were you 15 at this time? Yes. So you're 15, you go to the doctor and you say, I kind of feel like I might, might be trans, blah, 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 blah. And he just only said, the best thing to do is start the transition. He didn't take send you to any mental health care professional. Or he, he actually just said to start the transition. Um, he had recommended me to a gender specialist, but on the same day that he had recommended the specialist, he had written me a prescription for Lupron. Lupron? Wow. You see my face? <laughs> you know how I feel about Lupron and puberty blockers. But you've already gone through puberty, hadn't you, at 15? Or were you starting puberty? Um, I was a late bloomer. I was still in the process. Okay, so you were late. I was a late bloomer, too. I didn't start uh, puberty until, like, 15 or 16 as well. But um, so he wants to give you the Lupron to stop the uh, process of the puberty happening. And so is your mother with you or your father with you at this time? Uh, my at mother was not in the room with me. When I had left, when I left the office, I had given her the papers and mm -hmm. she had read the recommendation um, of the gender specialist and she'd read the medication and her jaw just dropped. I had told her before that I was questioning my gender, but she didn't know that I had told my doctor and she had recommended I only socially transition until I was an adult and knew who I actually was. Your mom said that? Yes. It's because your mom is awesome. So she was like, so when she saw this sort of recommendation from the doctor, did, what what happened? What was her reaction? Um, she told me no medical transition. She told me that there were many risks associated with puberty blockers. Um, she had told me that I could talk to her about questioning my gender. Um, okay. she, at the point I'd already cut my hair. I was wearing a binder. Um, I bought other clothes. But um, mm -hmm. she told me once I was 18, that's when I could start making decisions for myself. Which is, I think, the right, for me, I think that's the right answer to do because it's, social transition is fine. It also gives you this buffer. Like, because on some level, that's what I did at, at your age. I socially transitioned in the 70s, right? But, you know, I dressed like a boy. I was a boy. I did all those boy things, but I didn't make drastic. Your mom is actually very smart. It sounds like she kind of did a research did she? I don't know. She specifically researched a topic, but she's very smart when it comes to stuff like this. She knows a lot about social influence. Um, she knew about rapid onset gender dysphoria before it was coined as a term. Wow, that's interesting. Why do you think your mom knew all this? Um, we have a lot of friends and of my mom, and they have children that are around my age, and there's people my age who transitioned in that friend group. Okay. And I think she saw that a lot of people transitioned early and a lot of people weren't 
happy with it. Some people detransitioned. Wow. So you're, so you're, you were already read. So see, your mom's totally watching out for you. That is so awesome. She saw that and she knew there could be some influence from your pals around you. But the, but the also great thing about your mom that I'm seeing is that she was also very um, sensitive about the issue and she didn't just shut it down. She didn't just say, Oh, you're not trans. That's weird. She was like, well, you can dress like a boy and be a boy and do all those things. Just no medication. Yeah, right? I think by giving me the opportunity to socially transition instead of just shutting it off as soon as possible, it gave me the opportunity to explore that and realize that it wasn't for me. Fantastic. Your mom is, am I'm, really, I'm telling you, you got to send your mom some love for me, <laughs> honestly, because I, I, I think like more parents on some level um, need to see a mom like yours because i think i feel from my own interviews and from speaking to other they feel pressured into transitioning their children on some level they feel lost and they don't know what to do and they feel like there's no mm, information but somehow your mom found that information and she, especially the fact that she knew about rogd that is a that's what's happening to you on was happening to you on some level don't you think for sure I think that these problems arose around the beginning of my puberty. Mm -hmm. I think that they resolved themselves within probably two years. Right. So it's that two year time. That's the tough time. I think for most of you young people and especially girls, did, did you, do you also notice that it's mostly, was it mostly young girls that were transitioning around you? Um, in my personal experience, mm -hmm. I knew mostly um, male to female transitioners. Oh, I didn't okay. know any female to male. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it was all male to female around you, and though, so those were the ones who are probably were also saying possibly you're trans. Yeah. Yes. Wow, that's interesting because usually it's the other way around. I'm noticing more female to male transitioners than male to female. So that's okay. That's interesting. So. So now you decide you're trans and you're kind of going through this thing and you're social transitioning and that's your friend group. Your friend group is trans, uh, non-binary or any of the other stuff? For the most part, um, in high school, everyone was some form of LGBT, whether they were trans or non-binary or just identified mm. as bi or gay. Mm. Did you notice that there was a lot of LGBT identified people in your school? Not in my school particularly, um, mm -hmm. but my community, yes. Um, the mm -hmm. community in general has a high LGBT population. Oh, uh, where, you, where you're located, it has a high, a high, uh-huh, right. So, and also in high school, then you have this happening because it's more of a liberal space you live in. So did it, was everyone super cool with all, with the people transitioning there? I mean, was it just accepted? It was definitely accepted. I feel like it was almost more accepted to be some form of trans than it was to be cis. I <laughs> felt like a lot of people in my friend group thought that cis was boring. Um, oh, a couple of years. wow. That's what I want to hear because I think that's an actual thing that's happening, right? I think it's not cool to be cis. It's more cool to be in the LGBTQIA plus pee pee poo poo. Whatever I, that's what I call it because it's just so out of control. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> but but no, that you know, my old brain is like, I know how kids are, right? And kids want to be part of the cool group. I mean, come on, I was that way when I was a youngster, and 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 then it is cool right now. You get a lot of accolades. You get looked at it like brave and stunning and trans joy and all the words that they add on to this. Of course, a young person is going to be like, sis is boring. I, I want to be part of that cool club. So you just said it to me. And, you know, that says a lot to me that you as a young person kind of saw and felt that as well. Because they talk a lot of, don't you notice they sort of degrade cis, I don't use that word, but cisgender, right? It's it's a bad, it's sort of like a bad thing to be cisgender is what I see. Yes. And I've heard some cuss words I disagree with that include cis. 
Unbelievable. I mean, I don't get why they're so angry about cis people, right? And I, I really believe that's why they gave that term, right? Instead of just saying, you know, a man or a woman, because that's what that is. Your mom is a, is a woman and I'm a trans person, right? So why do we have to call your mom cis? Why do we have to call the 99% of the world is a lives in their biology? So why are we naming them cis? So in my brain, I think that that they're creating that divide on purpose so that cis is bad and trans is good right yeah it's sad I noticed, to me. Um, yeah yeah we're sort of going through a right that's what puberty is it's going from being a girl to a woman or a boy to a man and then there's a space where you're growing and things are happening and you're trying to find like where do i fit in in the world and then you know on top of that school so you have to deal with all of that sort of you know that clicky because it's clicky right there's groups and if you don't fit into any group then you and i didn't i was completely sort of like a loner but i was an athlete so i was you know that but I wasn't fitting into any of the groups and I, thank God there wasn't the internet or any of this stuff today. Cause I think somebody like me would have been sucked into, you know, wanting to belong to, to that. I, I find it quite sad to me. It makes me sad because I think the kids are being, well, I mean, even just your story to me, you were being pushed into a space that you weren't really supposed to be pushed. In. Did that start to make your anxiety and, and that kind of, get higher initially yeah um especially after i socially transitioned and i started identifying as male mm -hmm. i had um not legally changed my name but i was using another name mm -hmm. and i think it might have heightened my anxiety a little bit being uh, trying to socially present as something that i wasn't internally i think it yeah. made me wonder what else is wrong here Wow. So, but you went along with it. How long, how long for two years did you do that? About a year and a half. I year socially half. identified as male. So at school they called you he and they were okay with that and called you by the boy name and all of that. And it was perfectly okay. Yeah. I um didn't pass very well as male, but yeah. I had a lot of people who would accommodate anyway. Right, because I think also it's different now, and you know, in, in the, this newer trans space, you don't have to transition, or it's just about how you identify. And you could be a trans man that looks like a woman, and no one is questioning that. I do question it because I know that for me that was dysphoric to look like a woman, and I wanted to look like what you see today, right? And that alleviated my dysphoria. So it's why I question all this. And I question the rapid onset gender dysphoria, that that's a real thing. And then I also question this idea that you don't have to look like a man, you know, to transition. And but but that being said, I think it was very smart of you to socially transition and not get into the medical space. So, so now you're in university. And you're, are you still in university right now? Yes. Uh -huh. and, and how is that going? It's going well. Um, I've yeah. noticed that there's quite a diverse community here. Is that a good thing? I think so. Great, great. And what happened with your friends who were trans women? Are, are you still friends with them? I don't have much contact with them. Um, I know one of them um, is trying to detransition right now. They're suffering some medical problems from the puberty blockers. Oh, my um, God. They're 30 and they have a messed up spine and scoliosis. Oh, so how long? So they started taking puberty lockers at a young age and now they're 30. So now it's, mm, this is what I'm saying is going to happen. So are they equating that to the puberty blockers? Do you know? They're not sure, but I personally believe so. So do I. There's no way because when you block puberty, right, you're blocking the growth of the body, the physical body, which should be growing and puberty is healthy and it's important. So if you're blocking that and they keep saying that there's no damage, you're, you're just like, I, this is only the tip of the iceberg, friend. You know that, right? What about all the other kids who will detransition? There's no doubt in my mind they will detransition with, with this health problems. And it just saddens me. It just saddens me because... Why would we put 
So do you have an idea why we would put kids in a situation to take puberty blockers when we know that there's damage being done with that? Me personally, um, yeah. as someone who grew up and lived in America, I personally mm -hmm. think it's for money. I think that by yeah. pipelining these kids through a medical transition early, they now have lifelong customers. Wow. Wow. I believe the exact same thing. And people think I'm crazy. <laughs> but you, you, just, you just hit it right on the head, friend. And more people are starting to feel. How, how can we not see that? Because... In Europe, they don't give puberty blockers anymore. It's very, they, have, they pretty much pulled back on everything we are moving forward on, right? So the only thing I could think of is the exact same thing you're saying, because it costs a lot of money to go on puberty blockers and then you're medicalized for life, right? Yeah. Wow, I'm so, send your friends some love. I'm so sad that that's happening to that person. But I hope eventually maybe they'll speak out about the damage because we need people like that to step up and say, hey, wait a minute. Because now I, you know, I've had a couple kids who are on puberty blockers yelling at me. It saved my life. It's the best thing I ever did. I go, dude, you're like 15 and you started a year ago. Why don't you come back to me when you're in your 20s and then we'll have the same conversation, which is sad that I even have to say that. I'll be honest with you. I, I'm not comfortable with the fact that I feel like I probably am right because I don't want to be right. But I, I mean, you're just telling me that this person has, oh my God. <laughs> so if you were if you were around um, a bunch of young people today and they were all sort of wanting to do what you did at 15 years old and you got sort of, do, do you feel like you were sort of indoctrinated into that thought process? I feel like I might a, a little bit. I feel like a part of it was me being ignorant and young and not understanding what was going on. I believed a lot that I read on the internet but I do believe that there was a little bit of external indoctrination, yeah. But that's also indoctrination, the internet, don't you, don't you think? So, Because you're just reading and scrolling and seeing all these trans joy and trans rights are human rights and all the tropes that they love to use. It's easy to get a kid sucked in and then you feel a part of, right? You feel a part of this group of trans joy. Yeah. What happens when I always question them? Like, so what happens when the trans joy leaves? Because it's eventually going to leave. You're not always going to be so joyful, <laughs> right? So what happens when that when you when you have no more joy? Depends on how you feel about being trans or not. If you're still interested in it, then the community is accepting. But if you start to question if it wasn't right for you, it's really easy for them to want to turn their backs on you. Oh, that's the other thing. So do you feel like people turn their back on you? Yes. I had a lot of people who told me that I was putting transitioning into bad light. That just because it wasn't for me doesn't mean it's not for other people. And wow. I was silenced a lot when I tried to speak up. A lot of, of people were telling me going against you know, the narrative. That's how they try to shut you up. And so what are they fearful of? If, if everything is super cool, what, why do they care if your experience is different than theirs? I think they're worried about gatekeeping minors, but I don't necessarily think gatekeeping someone under 18 <laughs> from medical transition is a bad thing. Clearly not. And I love how <laughs> I love how they call it gatekeeping, trying to make it all dark, <laughs> right? And, all, and then you picture this dude with like a <laughs> a big thing, like you can't come past past this. You know, I call it safekeeping for that reason. I changed the I changed the dialogue because they've made gatekeeping into this nasty right thing. So, so that's what I'm hearing as well. Thank you for being honest about that, because that's what I'm hearing as well. When you, when you decide that it's not for you, they're no longer your friend. Yeah. Which that says to me that they were never really your friend because they only care about this external thing that's happening with you. But once you're no longer sort of, and also I think your transition validates their transition. Right. So when you're D trans, I don't even think you're a D transitioner. Would you consider yourself a D transitioner? 
I don't, um, just because I don't really have any lasting effects from it. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess you identified as trans and you socially transition to look male and to be male right but you know did you ever change any of your um your documents like you know anything that says female did you change it to male no so you didn't have to do anything like that so you just were physically this way and then you decided that it wasn't for you and you could just go back that and that's what i'm talking about and why i think socially transitioning is if you're gonna do it is the healthiest thing to do right because you have no medical damage or so i know would you would you say you have any any psychological damage from that i don't think so but i know that if i do question my gender in the future i'm going to be very hesitant if i decide any medical procedures um, i'm almost a little hesitant of the medical community in general not necessarily just with transitioning but yeah i'm a little hesitant now what are other um, options I have versus just taking a drug right now. That's right. And, and it's, you know, again, and I always tell everyone, you know, I transitioned at the age of 30. I'm 61 now, but you know, it was the best thing I ever did. It doesn't seem like it when you're kind of going through whatever you're going through, right? Everybody wants everything right now. I want the cake now. I'm not going to wait till next week, but, but the best thing I ever did. I've never looked back. 30 years of transition has been an incredible journey for me. And that's all I ever want for people like yourself. But at 15, I really just disagree that somebody can make such a life changing kick. Look at from the age of 15 to now you're 21. Yes. I'm sure many things have changed for you. Your likes and dislikes, right? What you, what are you studying in school? I'm studying biology right now. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I like you even more, my friend. <laughs> you know why I'm laughing, <laughs> I think. Because you know that they are trying to say that biology isn't real. Or if I hear biology is a social construct one more time, I'm going to puke. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. I mean, you can't be trans without biology. What is happening? I'm a biological female. I know I don't look like one. <laughs> That's the whole point of transition. And I, I, so interesting. Were you doing? Were you thinking about getting into biology before you went through this thing, through the transition stage, or, or, or what? What made you want to study biology? I'm not quite sure, but wanting to study biology did arise around the same time I socially detransitioned. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they're correlated fascinating who knows it could be subconscious or you know what i mean it could be I, I it really bothers me i'm just looking at this one thing that i wrote your friends bother me i have to tell your friends who totally turned their back on you and were so mean and nasty i mean that must have affected you on on some level mentally i felt like in a way my friends rejected me yeah. but i'm glad that i had other friends who were real friends well, thank God you did, because if you didn't, I think it could spiral you out. I mean, I know some detransitioners, as you know, I probably know, I, I interview them and I'm very, I have, of you know, I have a lot of empathy and compassion for detrans people because they are going through it and the community completely just turns their back and is mean and nasty. And some of the things they say is just unbelievable to me. So, so, so how your friends are saying that, that by you doing this, you're going to say to the world that this doesn't work but that was never your intention you were saying it didn't work for me which is it didn't work for you why can't you be honest about that but see that's the narcissistic part of this community everyone thinks that it's about them when it's you know that's not community community is a whole group of people with different ways of of being so to be so narcissistic to say because you doesn't work out for you it's going to affect all of us it's completely ridiculous because why doesn't it affect me right your desire to not live as a trans person doesn't affect me at all it, and on some level i respect that you came out of that and decided that and that wasn't for me do you think you could change your mind later on down the road and maybe want to go back to trying to transition i think it's possible i think it this current point in my life right now, um, I don't see that as 
um, a possibility in the future. Mm -hmm. But anything could happen, I guess. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's a dumb question. So, so tell me about your your family. Do you have brothers and sisters, or is it, or or what's up with that? Um, I have one older sister. Mm -hmm. And are you close with her? Very close. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. And um, so, how did your mom feel about the fact that you sort of um, stopped transitioning? Oh, my mom was pretty happy that I don't want to medicalize myself. Um, mm -hmm. She's known that I have some masculine traits. I grew mm -hmm. up playing with um, cars. I never wanted to play with dolls. I would play in the dirt. Um, I identified as lesbian. And I mm -hmm. think that that was something my mom worried about was that I was going from lesbian to trans man. Mm -hmm. And I think she knew that that wasn't who I was. Because moms are smart. You don't know I'm a dad. I have an 11 year old. And that's why I'm very outspoken about this because I'm around the kids, right? I coach soccer and I do all this stuff for kids and I just see them, you know, I see them for who they are and, and kids could say all kinds of stuff, right? And one day he wants to be, you know, halo dude, what has a master, what's his name? And then the next day he's playing a zombie game and he wants to be, you know what I mean? It's that, it's that, I don't think kids are focused enough to understand their identity on such a deep, deep level. When you when when you tell me an eleven year old is trans, I'm like, you're out of your mind. Kids don't even understand what a boy and girl is really at this point. How can they know they're a you right? You, do you understand what I'm saying? How can you know you're you're a girl when you're a boy if you haven't even gone through puberty and understand even all the aspects of what that actually means? So I bet your mom is happy and she's also probably happy that you didn't medicalize yourself. Yeah. So do you think being attached to your sexuality on some level may was part of the trans situation? Um, I believe to an extension, yes, that identifying as lesbian might have pushed me in the direction of thinking I was trans. Um, Why? Why do you think that? I grew up very boyish. Um, mm -hmm. I would dress like a guy. I mm -hmm. always wanted to have my hair short, um, play with cars. Um, mm -hmm. I had mostly male friends growing up. Mm -hmm. And I think at some point I was on the internet researching, um, how do I know if I'm a trans man? And that was one thing that came up was I grew up acting like a biological male. Wow. That's fascinating. So that's, I forget that. You can actually go on the internet. And what did you look up? How, what did you look up? How? how I don't do I remember know? specifically. Yeah, it was like, how do I know I'm a trans man or some, something to that effect, right? So that's dangerous. I, I mean, not for you, I get why you did it, but I'm saying in general, it's dangerous that a kid could go on and say, um, what does it mean to be, like, how do I become a trans man? Or how do I know if I'm a trans man? And then you're just going to get the answer from Google or like TikTok, and that's going to make you trans. That That's just not true. Because the thing is, is like, we're all transitioning or trans for pretty much one reason, and that's dysphoria. And um, that dysphoria can rear its head in kinds of all kinds of different ways. Did you know that it could actually go away as well if you just sort of, which I think on some level, but I'm wondering, do you think you actually had dysphoria or do you think that you were a tomboy on some level and, and then people see that as, or, oh, and your friends were saying it to you, right? Um, I, I think I had body dysphoria. I don't think okay. I had gender dysphoria. Different, big difference. Do you think a lot of girls deal with body dysphoria or dysmorphia? Definitely. What do you call it? Definitely. I do too. Yeah. I do too, especially going through puberty. It's a whole other, and I could say that because I did go through female puberty and it was rough. And But I guess it's, it's I think it's like that for all girls, do you think? Not just girls who are dysphoric, but it's a hard thing. I think so. Yeah. So while you're going through all this at the same time, dealing with some mental health stuff, which, you know, they don't really do evaluations with trans people in their uh, anymore when it comes to mental health care. They're just giving you testosterone. That's crazy. Did you know that? I think it's no, I didn't. <laughs> you didn't know that. So you can go to Planned Parenthood. And you can actually have an intake of 20 to 45 minutes and then they're literally writing you a 
I'm laughing so I don't cry. <laughs> they write you a prescription for testosterone in 20 minutes without any understanding of what if you have these mental health issues going on. They don't even evaluate your mental health. I don't even think my primary care physician asked me if I had gender dysphoria. My God. Yet he was like immediately ready to give you puberty blockers. Yes. That is just... I'm so thank you so much, friend, for being so honest about this, because people need to hear this. You are a youngster. You're still 21. You're a baby to me. You know what I mean? And th I'm not kidding. And I don't mean that by any, any disrespect. I mean, you got a long life ahead of you. You got to do some things in this world. And now on some level, you know, I think that they put this stuff into your head and and gave you a struggle that possibly isn't your struggle. Right? Yeah. That doctor really makes me so mad how they're just so easily ready to hand out medication to any kid that says they're trans. It's a shame. Um, so today you're living your life. You're totally being this person. You're living as a female in your, yes. in your, in your actual biology. Do you feel happy? A lot happier now than I did before. Yes. I know. I, I actually don't know you from before, but you seem super happy and you seem just grounded around your own stuff. And so what, what are you doing today? You're just going to school on and that and hanging out with your friends. Yeah, pretty much. That's it. Great life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's an actual great life. Don't get yourself into too much heavy stuff at 21. You got a long life to live and enjoy the, enjoy your time now as a youngster because you'll be so shocked how fast you'll become 60. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh, about, about, let me ask you about your sexuality. Do, you, do Are you still attracted to women or how is that going for you? Um, I identify as bisexual now. Bisexual. Um, I've noticed my attractions changed as I develop more. Oh, that's quite. And I hear that a lot from young people, right? So, so their, their sexuality, because again, you're growing. You're, that's why you, I don't think a young person can make these choices. You're, you're changed. Look from the age of 15 to 21, you've changed so much on some level, right? Don't, do you feel like even your brain changed? Definitely. Yeah. And now you're bisexual. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who knows what's next or whatever, but that doesn't even matter. The thing with sexuality is there's no damage done, right? So if you choose to be a lesbian and that you do that and you change your mind, there's no damage done. And if you choose to be bi, there's no, you know, there's nothing physically like that's never going to go back. You're just, you know, whatever. These are the people you want to have experiences with. That's why I really think it's such an important thing that we talk about sexuality as opposed to gender identification. It, it, because I think the sexuality isn't going to hurt anyone. And all kids, on all young people, they experiment. And I think experimenting with gender is not a bad thing if you're doing what you did, right? On some level, yeah. just you not nothing got really hurt, except your bad friends who are complete assholes to you. <laughs> Seriously, it's gross. And I, I, I hope that you're okay from it. And I hope that you didn't get too damaged from that. No, I I feel like I've grown from it. And I've learned um, important lessons for next time. Um, parts of me worry for them. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. You have a good heart. Is there anything you would want to say to young people if they're listening right now about social transitioning or transitioning or any wisdom you have because you have wisdom you went through it um i guess the only advice i would have is um if you're truly questioning your gender um definitely start with a social transition um change your wardrobe change your hair um see how it goes mm -hmm. and um definitely wait until you're 18 before you start the medicalization process Sweet. at least 18. <laughs> at least into <laughs> my old brain is like, I think 18 is still too young, but uh, you know, 18, you can do all kinds of things in this country. So if they're going to make that the legal age, then I can't say anything about it. Right. But under legal age, I can. And I have, I, I as far as I'm concerned, I think I, I have to, as an elder, 
and somebody who has been living this way for 30 years. And I see things at a different sort of vantage point than somebody who has one year of transition experience. So, wow. Thank you, friend. You're such an ostrich. Is there anything else you want to discuss? Or, you know, I think everything you said to me is such an important topic and really somebody will benefit from this. And it means a lot to me that you're willing to have the conversation. I hope that this can reach people. Um, I'm not sure there's much more I have to say, but thank you very much for having me. It's um, oh, been a wonderful great. experience to talk about what I've been through. Oh, that's sweet. No, you're lovely. You have great energy. I feel so happy that we had the conversation and that, no, I'm not kidding. You really, this is going to help somebody. I have no doubt in my mind. And, you know, you stepping up and being willing to sort of put your face out there, it's, it says a lot about you and it says that you do care. And that you're not transphobic, you're not nah, all the things bleh, that people are going to say. <laughs> you care because you don't want to see another kid sort of get put in that space. So it means a lot to me that you're willing to step up and say these things because I can say them till I'm blue in the face. But somebody like you who has this experience as a young person, it's so different and so much more impactful. And and to the kids out and the young people out there who are watching this, you know, what she's saying is from actual lived experience. So just take it to heart and 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 see what you can learn from her. Okay. So with that, Layla, thank you so much for your time. You're a beautiful human being. And I um thanks everybody for watching and get leave her lots of beautiful comments. <laughs> Don't leave nasty comments. <laughs> but that because she, there's no need to. <laughs> she doesn't need nasty comments. She gave her time here today. And and um I appreciate you all watching and liking, subscribing and sending this to people who might necessarily benefit from watching it. So thanks friend. I'll um I'll see you. I'll see you all next week on the live and thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.